Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 23 to 25. Exodus chapter 2, verses 23 to 25. The title of the message is, The Lord Remembers. The Lord Remembers. The Lord Remembers. Exodus chapter 2, verse 23. The Bible says, And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Brother Oscar, can you please pray for the message? Lord God, thank you for this all come here together to praise you, give you glory. Thank you for the Bible believing church. Thank you for the right doctrine. Lord God, please bless this message and for the pastor of the Holy Spirit. Please exchange our hearts with this message and let us be a blessing to all those in the, in the world those in our family and those brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for giving us all our needs day by day. Let us come to you. The word. Jesus in my prayer. Amen. 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 The Lord remembers. Remember is a great word and it's a great character. And it's also a, one of the things that will haunt you or bless you. Many people remember certain things in their lives. You all should remember when you got saved. I mean, if you don't remember when you got saved, then you have to check your salvation. I mean, you don't have to remember the specific time and date, but you should know when you got saved. If you don't remember when you got saved, then you really have to check your salvation. And you can't go past today. You have to make sure. And you got to start remember, remembering that today is the day you got saved. For many of you, you remember when you got saved. And it was a joyful day. And it was a very, very, how should I say, you know, your burdens were lifted. You were in bondage to sin, but you were freed eternally. And you were adopted into the family of God, yes. from devil's family to God's family. So certain things you have to remember, all your sins were forgiven once and for all. I mean, even though you and I still commit sin physically, but spiritually, you know, your body and soul were separated once and for all. So do you remember when you got saved? And if you remember that day, how joyful you were. And those are some of the things that you have to remember as a Christian. And you also have to remember when you fail the Lord many, many times. Yes. Because those are the reminders that will help you to become a better Christian. What problems you and I have when it comes to remembering things? As you grow older, you tend to forget more easily. It's harder to remember things as you get older. It's just a brain thing, right? You know, it just it goes against the uh, evolution. You know, you don't get stronger, better. You get worse as you grow older. I don't know. Is it easier prime like 33 and a half? You know, afterwards you go down. And some of you guys will hit that 33 and a half pretty soon. I've hit a few years ago, or maybe many years ago, right? So. We tend to forget things very easily. I know as we were going through our birthdays and anniversaries, if you're not careful, you forget that as well, right? And that's a big trouble for you. 
When Lord says he remembers, he remembers everything. I mean, Lord remembers everything. That's why it's very, very critical for you to understand that God remembers everything. Especially after you got saved, he remembers everything. And before you got saved, he remembers everything as well. That's why you reap what you sow. You know, you won't be liable for those sins that you've committed before you got saved. If you trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's gone once and for all. However, God is fair. You reap what you sow. That's why before you got saved, if you've done so much smoking, don't be surprised if you get lung cancer. Before you got saved, you know, you slept around with everybody. Don't think that, you know, you're not going to get those STDs. Don't think that uh, before you got saved, you've done all those drugs. After you got saved suddenly, all of your dead brain cells are alive again. Yeah. And then you have a right, you know, mindset all the time. No. Many drug addicts, after they got saved, they still don't know where they are sometimes. They still can't even comprehend certain things. Why? Because you reap what you sow. Right. However, the greatest thing is that at the judgment seat of Christ, Lord remembers nothing before you got saved. I mean, that's a great thing, especially if you got saved at an older age. Man, think about all the sins that you committed. But Lord does not remember those sins once and for all. However, after you got saved, Lord remembers everything. Unless you do one thing, right? You know, one of our favorite verses is what? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Man, why do you not take advantage of that verse? Uh, I'm not, I mean, I am terrified at the judgment seat of Christ. Just even thinking about it. Because, man, I've been saved a long time. You know, I've been saved more than some of you guys are old here. How old you are, you know? And think about all those past, like, you know, 20-some years after I got saved. I mean, did I really go to the Lord to get right with him for every sin that I've committed? I don't think so, right? But if I don't do anything about it, then I'm liable for those sins at the judgment seat of Christ. I mean, that's a scary thing. Because the Lord's going to play everything that has happened to me after I got saved. Like, every second of my life. And he remembers, you're talking about an almighty God, omnipotent, omniscient. I mean, all-knowing God. And he's going to play that, everything about your life. And it's not about actions we're talking about, right? That's the scary part. It's not what you've done, you know, know, physically outside, but it's everything inside. Man, every wrong thought, dirty thought, bad thought, hateful thought, you know, every worst thought you've ever had, If you do not get right with the Lord, if you don't confess those sins, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to play. And you are liable for it. I mean, because even right now, think about it. As you're listening to preaching, as I'm even preaching, some thoughts go through your head. And devil's going to tempt you no matter what. And your flesh is going to tempt you no matter what. And the world's going to tempt you no matter what. And during these moments, if you are not Careful, you're going to let your flesh take control, your mind. You're going to let the devil control your mind. You're going to let the world control your mind. Then what do you think is going to happen? Is that really living holy? Is that really not committing sin? No, you're already committing sin. And there's no excuse for it. How many of you guys, if you're watching, you know, today's a Super Bowl day, right? I know if you're excited to watch, you know, Super Bowl and whatnot, and most likely, you're going to be awake throughout the Super Bowl, and you're going to probably concentrate, and if you have a gathering together, right? With those certain events, you give your 100% attention. But when it comes to the Word of God, many of you, when it comes to preaching, do not give your 100%, because your mind is wondering right now, don't you think that God will remember these moments? Yes. God will not forget. Amen. That's a problem. I mean, certain times, you know, we have a brother who works like 80 hours a week and then comes straight from work on Sunday morning. If he dozes off, I mean, I kind of understand, right? But for many of you guys who are well-rested on Saturday, 
who should be well rested on Saturday, come on Sunday morning and you don't give your attention to the word of God, even you don't give your attention to preaching, you don't give your attention to things of God in the ministry, then God's going to remember those days. And if you've been saved for a long time, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time you participate in any other ministries like Fridays and Saturdays, God's going to remember. Just because your physical body is here doesn't mean nothing. There are people listening and watching in the internet. They're giving all of their heart out because they don't have a physical local church to go to. You think you're better than them? No. no. You're, you're, it's like almost like a puppet. You're, you're just a puppet sitting here. But the real you who's controlling you is not even here. Now you get no credit for it. Zero credit. It's almost like this. In a, in a classroom, say you're in a college, and they take attendance, right? And then you don't attend. You don't want to go. And then you ask your friend to write your name, right? And then suddenly teacher, out of all the days, you know, you haven't missed much days, but this day you miss. And the teacher calls attendance. He goes, hey, where's John Doe? Where's Jane Smith? Your name's written here. Okay, you don't get credit for it. But a lot of times you're just like that. It's as if, you know, you ask someone like your old nature to sign your name, but your new nature is not even here. It's not even active, right? Then how can you get something out of it? How can you grow as a Christian when your heart is not in it all the time and you don't remember that God remembers? You know, I think the scariest thing for any kid is when your parents remember and they remember the wrongs that you've done, and they haven't talked to you about it yet. So your mommy goes, your mommy is very scary. Your daddy is scarier. And they go, do not, do not touch that jar of cookies. But you're so hungry. Actually, you're not even hungry. You know, you just need some dessert, sweet tooth, right? And then you know for sure that if you get caught, you got to be punished. I mean, you're scared of that part, but your flesh is taking over. You let temptation take over. And then you go, you grab it, right? Unbeknownst to you, your mommy and daddy was watching you the whole time, right? Light was dark, you know, it's dark room. You know, you thought it was like, you know, close to midnight in the evening. So you make as least of a sound as possible, like a cat, and then... You know, you slightly, very slowly open the jar. It makes a little bit of noise. Your heart sinks, right? And then you make sure that no one's around you. You take that out. Then you very fastly run to your room, and you start enjoying and eating it. And then next morning, your heart's pounding. Man, what if they're going to, you know, lecture me? Oh, man, I'm going to get hit. You know, I'm going to be disciplined. But they haven't said anything. They just say, hello, Johnny, you know, hello, Jane. And then you go about your day. But suddenly, a week later, your parents tell you to come into their room. You have that feeling, right? When, as a child, when your parents go, hey, let me talk to you. Well, come to the room. Let's talk one-on-one, one-on-two, you know, whatnot. And then your heart sinks. And during those moments, what do you do? You probably know already that your parents already remember what you've done. And you remember what you've done. And the first reaction you do is, you know, what's this about? And then they ask you, do you have anything to tell me? You know, when someone asks you, do you have anything to tell me? 99% of the time, they know what they're talking about. They already know what you need to tell them. I mean, 99.9% of the time, there's always a rare exceptions here and there. You know, when those, you know, how should I say, interrogators trying to get something out of you. you know, but I don't know, many of you guys aren't in that situation where you go to the you know, police station and have to talk to detectives or FBI or CIA or anything. Just a normal people. Then what should your attitude and reaction should be? Your parents, what do they expect? They want you to come out clean and just say sorry. Simple as that. But what's 9 out of 10 people do usually? 
not just normal, but Christians included, because you and I are human beings. You start acting like you don't know anything. And in front of God, you always act like you don't know anything, even though you've done everything, even though you committed those, you know, wicked sins. So you're having a conversation with parents go, do you have anything to tell me? You're like, no, 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 nothing, you know. Oh, well, why? What's going on? Because, oh, you know, I was looking at the, we were looking at the jar. Cookies were gone. Uh-huh. And your brother and sister, they said they didn't eat it. So, you know, we're asking you. So that's a that second chance you have. You know, a lot of times you get second chance. You know, first you say, I don't know. And your parents start describing the situation. And a lot of times God will let you know the situation. Because God will first warn you, hey, where were you? They're like, why did you, I mean, do you know what happened? They're like, no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about, God. And then God gives some kind of evidence or some witness account. And then that kid's like, yeah, you know, they say they didn't eat it, but I think they're the one who ate it. Oh, don't you do it all the time? When God specifically put a witness in your life, and trying to let you know that you've committed that sin and it's been exposed already, you still give excuse. It's like a second level excuse. Like first level, almost everybody does it. But second level, you shouldn't go to that second level. If the subject is already being discussed, you got to start right away from your heart. Be sorry for your sins. You got to confess to the Lord. But however, many people don't get to the I mean, don't stop at the second level. You start blaming everything else. You know, mom, dad, you know, they're liars. But now they say, you know, we were there. We actually filmed you, you know, with our ring or whatever the thing is, right? Is that you? You know, it looks like you. Same hair, same face, you know, same pajama, you know. Now, what are you going to do? You have third chance to come out clean and say sorry. But you don't do it. Many of you guys don't do it either. Then you start blaming the person who's accusing you. Right? You know, in a lot of conversation, many times people get angry, not for because they're just, because they're guilty. Your family member, your wife, your husband, anybody accuses of something, when you are guilty, a lot of times you get angry. It's like, how can you accuse me? You don't trust me? You know, I'm your child. I'm your daughter. You know, I'm your son. I'm your mom. I'm your dad. You know, I'm your wife. I'm your husband. I'm your grandma, grandpa. You know, I'm your long lost cousin. They're like, how can you blame me? So you're trying to take care of that situation by getting louder and by getting angrier. You're still guilty. But you're, right now, what you're doing is you're heaping coals upon your sins. It's getting hotter and hotter. The punishment is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You don't even understand it. You start accusing the person. I mean, that's the human world. But think about spiritual world. You're accusing God now. Even though God has pointed out everything, you're saying, God, you put me in that situation. You made me do it. I mean, that's one thing every single one of Christians here and listening should never, ever do. You never blame God for your sins. You never, ever. I mean, God had many verses in the Word, right? He is not going to tempt you. He's going to... I mean, your temptation, when the sins come, like those temptations come, you have every ability to reject it and run away from it. That's what the Bible says, right? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Then you cannot blame God. And you have to remember, God remembers everything. God could point out exactly when you fail. God could point out exactly when through the Holy Ghost, try to convict you. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. When the Lord plays all that videos in your life, all your life video at the judgment seat of Christ, and he goes, man, I remember. And eventually you have to remember too. 
because it's you playing on the video, then what are you going to do? That's why many of you and me will we'll just, you know, be down on the floor, our heads to the floor, right? Up in the air. Think about it. I mean, that's a scary thought, too. With millions of witnesses, if not billions, and just sitting, just have your head down, you know, your tears are dripping, you know. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, you know. I mean, can you ever play that scenario in your head? If you ever did, you remember that God remembers everything, and you will stop doing certain things that you've been doing all your life. If it doesn't stop today, there's no guarantee about tomorrow. Because Romans 8.13, I go to it. I'm sure many of you guys go to it. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Right. You're just playing with fire. It's almost like you're carrying a, uh, carrying a bomb with you. You're the one who detonates it, you think. So you think you have the control. But no, it's Lord's in control. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, time's up. He presses a button, and you explode. I mean, those things could happen to you at any moment. Because certain Christians here and listening, you're really, really, really on the thin edge. You're right now right in front of the cliff before you fall. But because of God's and grace, he's holding you back. But if he goes, man, time's up. Your cup's filled with all of your sins. Then boom. Devil has complete access, control, has a permission, and you're done. I mean, you want to get to that point as a Christian? But you're getting closer and closer and closer to many of you. Then... Number one point is that you have to understand that the Lord takes action. He remembers. That's why he takes action. Lord will take action. Remember that. If nothing has happened to you, whether you've done good or bad for the Lord, Lord remembers. And he will eventually take action. If you've been saved, Christian, and you work your life and every day you work for the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive reward. Amen. He'll take action, whether in this life or after life. He'll give you rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. But if you've been committing sin constantly, and if you've been rejecting the word of God and preaching, if you've been breaking promises with the Lord over and over and over, he remembers. And he will take action. That's why Galatians chapter 6 is also a scary chapter. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God will never be mocked. You try to mock them. You try to tempt Christ with your justifications of your sins. But God is always, remember, he's way, way above you. I mean, his knowledge, power, and thinking I mean, you're like less than dirt. He's all the way up in heaven. And in between, you feel it. And he's greater and bigger than anything else. Don't you think that almighty God will not remember everything that you've done? Will not make you pay for everything that you've done? God takes action. And we have several verses in Genesis that let's look at. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. The thing is, if you do what God says, he remembers. If you don't do what God says, he remembers. If you do what God says, he will bless you. If you don't do what God says, he will punish you. I'm as simple as that. And then you and I have a choice to make. Do I want to do what God says to do? Or do I not want to do and disobey God? Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. The Bible says, and God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. So God remembered Noah. So he gave his mercy, provided his grace to Noah and the all living thing. Why? Because God remembered. Noah listened to God. Noah preached for 100 years. 
Noah built the ark, and God remember. That's why when you are put in a situation where it's God and anything else, you have to choose God. When you're put in a situation when you know God tells you to do it, you got to do it. Then you still have blessings like Noah. I mean, think about it. After the flood, you know, everything, Noah really messed up, right? I mean, horrible things happen. But God still remembered for what he had done and the promise that God made him. That's why, you know, some of you, I mean, including myself, everybody, we go through certain things in our life. But when you forget that God remembers, when you forget the word of God, that's when you get in trouble. But if you do remember what God said, then you have peace of mind. You have that perfect peace, right? If you're struggling with life, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, relational, right? God said he'll provide all your need. God said that. Why? Because he remembers you as a child of God. Amen. Then you hang on to it, right? Just like Noah, he blessed him. And of course, we have a, another great example. Let's go to chapter 19. Chapter 19. Chapter 19, verse 29. Chapter 19, verse 29. He remembered Noah. And he remembered Abraham, Genesis chapter 19, verse 29. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the, in the which Lot dwelt. Because he remembered Abraham, you know, he saved Lot. Right? The Lord remembers. You know, sometimes... The decisions that you make will either save or destroy people around you. Do you ever remember? I mean, do you ever consider that? You're so selfish. I'm so selfish. We, we care nothing about others. But when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what have you become? You, have, you are part of Christ. We are all one body, one spirit. Then... If a hen suddenly goes, I don't care about the body, and hen gets into trouble, and hen gets hurt, and hen loses fingers, right? And then you only have, say, index and thumb now, and you lost three fingers because of your wicked ways. Is that going to affect the whole body? Of course. I mean, now the left hand has to do more work. Now the things that you could have done with four fingers, all five, it's going to be difficult now. Writing will be difficult, right? Grabbing things will be difficult. Doing anything, computer, everything becomes difficult. You make others' life harder because you make wrong decisions. Because you don't remember that God remembers everything. Man, horrible things happen throughout the Word of God when people forget that God remembers. I mean, God remembers everything, and it goes down to generation after generation after generation. I mean, look at our Israelites, right? The things that they said at the crucifixion about Jesus Christ, it affected their generation after generation. You have to remember the decisions that you make will affect positively or negatively with your family, with your loved ones, no matter what. And because God has examples. Because one man was righteous, Lot was saved. If you stand for the Lord, if you are righteous amidst all this wicked generation and wicked people, the Lord remembers you, and you know who's going to benefit? People around you. I mean, as head of the household, man, if you don't do right, it's going to negatively affect your whole family. But if you do right, they're going to be blessed. So every time before you do anything, think about it. Just take a moment, right? Don't be a fool all the time. 
Just step back. Like 10 second rule, right? Think about for 10 seconds. Man, what is going to happen to me, my family, the church, body of Christ, if I were to do this? You're going to stop doing a lot of things. Before you go to a wrong channel, before you start listening to wrong things, before you start meeting wrong people, before you start buying wrong things, you're going to think. Because don't ever forget, God remembers. And when God says it's time, he'll reveal it. Man, that's, that's a scary part. You, you and I think that we could hide things from God and the people. Oh, no, maybe you don't. You know that you can't hide from God, but you could hide from people, your loved ones, your family, whoever. But when the time is right, God reveals it. Then who's going to get hurt? You think that, ah, ah if I'm the only one who needs to get hurt, so it's fine. Yeah, right. If husband does wrong things, do you think wife's going to be like, oh, yeah, it's just him. It doesn't affect me. If husband does wrong things, children's like, no, it's just my dad. You know, it's not going to affect me. If husband does wrong thing, if his parents, mom and dad's like, oh, it's my son. You know, he done wrong. It's not going to affect me. It affects everybody. Generation. That's what you have to understand. God remembers everything, good or bad. And then you are included in the body of Christ. So every action that you take affects the body of Christ, whether it be good or bad. That's why you can't be selfish. That's why you can't be thinking bad about other brothers and sisters in Christ. Because Lord remembers those thoughts. Man, that's the scary part, amazing part. God remembers every, every second, millisecond of your thoughts, whether it be good or bad. If you ever had hatred toward some brother or sister in Christ, and if you never got right with the Lord about it, he's going to play it at the judgment seat of Christ. And you are liable, you're responsible, and you have to pay for it. I mean, that should tell you something. You know what? I should just have a you know, kind, loving, charitable thoughts towards my family, brothers in Christ, and everybody else. Amen. Right? That's simple as that. But anytime. For the wrong reasons, you have bad thoughts, sinful thoughts toward anybody, not just brothers and sisters in Christ, but outside, you're reliable for it. You're going to be responsible for it. And how many thoughts do you go through, do you have on a daily basis? I mean, I don't know if anybody done the study for it. I mean, I'm sure there's some data out there. I mean, thousands, tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands, if you're always, you know, thinking about next step, next step, next step, I mean, maybe at least thousand, right? Then out of that thousand thoughts that you have on a daily basis, how many of them are godly, do you think? Oh, yeah, at least half, more than half, good. But what about other 400? How are you going to deal with those 400? And 400 times seven is what? 2,800, right? I mean, in a month? I mean, some 50,000 or 5,000? I mean, you do your math. And then if you've been saved for a long time, maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even a million thoughts that you are liable for at the judgment seat of Christ. And Lord's not going to let you get away with it because he's just God. He remembers, right? Let's go to chapter 30, chapter 30, verse 22. So think about Noah, think about Abraham, think about Lot. And let's think about verse 22. Who comes out? Rachel. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened, unto, hearkened to her and opened her womb. Well, so this is a blessing, right? God remember, you know. She wanted to have a kid, so God opened her womb, and she was able to conceive, right? And that's because... Lord, remember. Lord will remember. And Lord will always do it according to his will. In that, if you chose the Lord, if you stood up for the Lord, he remembers. And that blessing will come to you eventually if it hasn't come to you already. And then that will lead you to second point. So Lord remembers and he will take action. Secondly, 
when Lord remembers and taking his action, it takes time. You have to remember that Lord's time and our time is totally different. It takes time sometimes to wait on the Lord. But don't you ever forget that Lord remembers, right? Maybe you lost your family because you chose the Lord. It shouldn't be your expectation that the Lord will give you a new family within a week, right? As time passes by, I mean, suddenly, the Lord gives you better family. But it took 20 years. However, you know that the Lord remembers. Let's turn to Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. So it takes time for Lord to take action on the things that he remembers. That's why you and I should be thankful that he's giving us grace and mercy. He remembers, but he hasn't taken that action on you. You've committed so many sins in your life. You haven't gotten right with the Lord. Lord remembers everything, but he still hasn't taken action. Man, shouldn't you be thankful? Shouldn't you go to the Lord right away and like, Lord, thank you for your grace and mercy. I don't want you to remember this no more. I want it gone from my, you know, my life once and for all. I want it to be cleansed once and for all. I mean, if you go to the Lord, if you confess your sins from the bottom of your heart, the Lord's going to remember no more. He's still going to pay for what you've done, but it's not going to be counted against you. Well, that's what you want, Right? I mean, I don't want nothing to count it against me for eternity or at the judgment seat of Christ. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 14. The Bible says, remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. Verse 22. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. Look at verse 31. And for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits, remember me, O oh my God, for good. You need to seek the Lord. You know, the Lord remembers, right? Nehemiah knows that the Lord remembers, but he still asks the Lord to remember him. What does that show? You have to seek the Lord because it takes time for the Lord to take action sometimes when it comes to things that he's remembered. And are you going to just stay put and do nothing? I mean, Nehemiah is a great example. That's where close relations with the Lord shows. Go to the Lord. Go, remember this, Lord, remember this. Lord, remember me. When was the last time you ever prayed for the Lord? I pray to the Lord to remember me of certain things that you've ever done, right? I, I guess probably 90% of you probably don't have that as part of your prayer, right? right? I mean, do you ever go, Lord, remember me? No. And then Nehemiah at least certain things that he's done. Not to, how should I say, you know, be proud, looking for this reward or not. He just want God to show him mercy. He says, spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. Then Lord showed that mercy and grace to Israelites. That's why you have to go to the Lord. You have to seek him. You have to think about the fact that Lord remembers, but it takes time for actions to be taken. But if you seek the Lord, it could be actions could be, take earlier, right? Actions could actually happen more. I mean, for example, you want someone to get saved. Lord, remember all the prayers. Remember all the effort. And Lord's will that everyone gets saved. Come to repentance. Then that's when Lord could show great mercy and grace where someone that you've been praying for, someone that you wanted to get saved, actually get saved. But what have you done? Are you asking the Lord to remember? Or are you just sitting there being selfish on your couch, on your bed, and do nothing? You're like, you know what? That's the Lord's will. I'll just leave it at that. It doesn't work like that. 
Lord wants action from your heart. So if you want to Lord to really remember, you got to sincerely seek him. You have to. If you don't, then it's going to is status quo. We are all people, especially Christians, you have Holy Spirit within you. And you have the ability to get, you know, closer to the Lord, far from the Lord, even though He's inside of you. When you're closer to the Lord, you understand more what it means that Lord remembers. Lord remembers even the tiniest of sins that you committed. Lord also remembers the tiniest of the, you know, commitment, dedication, obedience that you've done to him. He remembers. Then you will know like, hey man, I am where I am because the Lord remembers whether it be good or bad. And you know the actions and the things that you have to do to get to the place where the Lord remembers as much good and as little as possible of the bad. I mean, if the Lord remembers only the bad things about you and my life after we got saved, man, that's horrible testimony. But if he remembers more good than the bad until we see him, then that's a good testimony. And lastly, when it comes to Lord remembering, Lord said to remember others. Lord said to remember others. And if that's an example, go to the book of Luke chapter 17. Luke 17. So you and I are not in a you know, separated boat. We're all in the same boat. And we have to learn, we have to remember what happened to forefathers of faith as well as people who disobeyed the Lord. Luke 17, verse 32, the Bible says, remember, remember who? Remember Lot's wife. And what happened to her? And she turned into a pillar of salt. Do you want to end up like her? I mean, turning back and wanting the world? And disobeying the Lord? If you remember someone like Lot's wife, then you're not going to do certain things. One thing is that you won't turn around. You won't look back at the world. You're going to go continuously forward. Man, Remembering things is hard as you grow older. I only want to remember good things. In order for me to look at good things, I got to forget about bad things. But if you turn around, those bad things will still be there. And you'll remember it longer and longer and longer. You can't stop sinning because just like last wife, you just turn around. And you're exposed to that sin. And you got to start remembering. Your, your brain's like, oh, man, thank you for the reminder. Your flesh is like, thank you for the reminder. And then you remember everything that associated with that sin. And what happens? You remember the pleasure of those sins. And you're weak. I'm weak. So you're going to commit it again and again and again. But thank God he has given you grace and mercy. Thank God we weren't born in the times of Lot. I mean, thank God we're born in the church age where we can really get right with the Lord and forget about turning around and remember people who failed and learn from them. Because if Lord remembers everything, there's no way for you to get away from everything or anything. Then it's good that you and I start remembering certain things. If you don't remember the day you got saved, if you don't remember the joy, if you don't remember how much God has done for you, if you don't remember the grace and mercy he has given you and shown you all this time, then you got to start remembering. If you don't know the Bible because you don't study the Bible, you don't read the Bible, you don't meditate in the Word of God, so you don't remember anything from the Word of God, then you got to start studying. You have to meditate. You don't remember the days that you pray. You don't remember the days that you've been on your knees then you better get on your knees and pray. You don't remember the times that where even the little bit of a sin for thoughts really bothered you? If you don't remember, you better get closer to the Lord. If you don't have any good memory and remembrance, something's wrong with your Christian life. 
If you are full of all sinful memories, what does that tell you? You want to have a more of a spiritual memory. You want God to remember all the good things, all the things that you've done for him after you got saved. And you want Lord to forget all the sins that you committed. Then you go to 1 John 1, 9. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until tonight. Whenever your heart's right, go to the Lord. Get right with the Lord. Again, I always say, we forget a lot of things. You, so you ask the Holy Ghost to help you remember the sins that you have not confessed. Right? You can't be generic. Lord, I confessed my sins for the past two years. Please forgive me. It doesn't work like that. You don't even know what you're confessing about. You have to be specific. Certain sins, whatever sin is, you have to be specific, get right with the Lord, with repenting heart, turn away from it once and for all, and go to the Lord. That's how you get right with the Lord. That's how you will start eliminating these bad memories and bad remembrance. That's how the Lord's going to just say, okay, even if accusers come to him. I remember that br- brother, sister, you know, they've done all those things, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, they read what they saw, but on their account, I don't remember no more. It's gone. Cleansed by blood of my son once and for all. It's gone. Amen. Man, we have a great solution. We have a great opportunity. God has given us grace and mercy. Yeah. It's up to you and it's up to me to do the right thing. Bob Jones said, Bob Jones Sr. said, do right. Simple as that. Do right then God will remember you in the right way. You don't do right, do wrong. God will remember you in wrong way. Let's pray. <laughs>